Um, what we're going to do today is to have a look at the various tasks which are available to you uh, for your controlled assessment. Okay. Now they're arranged in this way, as you can see from the sheet that you've got in front of you, which I think is pages 33 and 34 from the specification. Um, there's basically two types of practical, sorry, two types of controlled assessment tasks that you can do. Okay. One is called an unaided task, that's in list A, which you'll see arranged in front of you there. Um, that basically means naked eye. So you go out and you do something in the sky that just involves your eyes, basically. Okay. Then there's list B, which contains tasks which are called aided tasks, and that involves using some kind of optical equipment. Okay. Uh, it could be a telescope, it could be a pair of binoculars, it could be a camera, it could be all sorts of things. It could be a, a robotic telescope on the other side of the world. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can use. Okay. If you're thinking, I don't have a lot of astronomy telescopes at home, um, as I say, it can just be a small pair of binoculars. If you've got a pair of binoculars at home that people use occasionally for looking at things a long way away, that will do fine, probably, for the kind of astronomy you're going to need to do for controlled assessment. Okay? Now, if we have a look at the list there, that's the first page, page 33, uh, you can see the idea, which is they're arranged into two lists like that. If you look at the titles, you can see that basically it's the same title twice. If you look at project uh, A1, for example, and then project B1, you can see A1 is about drawing lunar features. So it's picking features on the moon, particular craters or whatever, and saying, right, I'm going to have a look at that crater at full moon, I'm going to have a look at that crater at quarter moon, at crescent moon, etc., etc., and I'm going to record how it, it changes its appearance. Okay? Many people obviously look at the moon when it's full because it's most noticeable, but actually things like craters, you get a very flat view of them, they're just like circles. If you look at the same thing when the moon is at crescent phase, it often looks much more, um, it's much more obvious to see. You can see the sides sticking up with the shadows and stuff like that. Okay? Um, now you can do that as a naked eye project. Uh, it's actually quite tricky, I think. You can actually do that as a naked eye project. You can go out with your naked eyes and you can stare at the moon and you can do your sketching and that's that. That's A1. Okay. However, you can also do B1. Now, B1 is the same project, I think you can see from the list, but aided. So you would get yourself a small pair of binoculars. Okay. So, for example, a pair of binoculars like this. These are quite nice binoculars. Uh, the PTA bought these for us um, a while ago. We have about 10 sets of these, so if you wanted to borrow them, uh, for a few months, we can sign them out to you and you can, you can take them home and use them. Uh, if you've got a pair of binoculars similar to this at home, or smaller perhaps, it'll still be fine. Uh, certainly for looking at the moon, looking at lunar features, a pair of binoculars like this would be absolutely fine. Okay? Uh, so you could do project one, if you like, naked eye, which is A1, or you could use a pair of binoculars to do the same thing, to draw your lunar features, that's called B1. Okay? Very importantly, as I think it does say there, you can't do the same project from the same row. So have a think about that. You've got to do a list A project, you've got to do a list B, but you can't choose them from the same row. So if I decide to do project A1, naked eye drawings of lunar features, I can't also do B1. Okay? So if you choose A1, you can pick anything from the B list except B1. Okay? Personally, I think B1's easier than A1. Alright? The moon is fine, but when you actually sit there and try and draw small feet on the moon, the moon is surprisingly small, is it? I think it's your thumb, isn't it, at arm's length? Next time you see a full moon, you can cover the full moon with your thumb at arm's length. That seems very small, doesn't it? But of course, the moon is brilliant white on a black background. So your brain, which doesn't see black and white quite the same, assumes that the white thing is much, much bigger than it really is, and the black background makes it look huge, and you think, gosh, look at that huge moon. But actually, it's only about your thumb, I think, at arm's length. Okay? So actually, B1, I think, is easier than A1, because you actually get to use a pair of binoculars. Okay? Um, let's have a quick look at some of the other ones. Uh, meteor shower, you've got there. We'll talk a bit more about them a bit later on. And drawing the constellations, things like shadow stick, etc., etc. You've basically got to choose something from this day, something from list B, but not the same project from both lists. Okay? Uh, the aided projects, if you have a look at them, uh, things that you might expect, drawing the stars, meteor showers, constellation drawing, sunspots, looking at light pollution, shadow stick. As I say, there are some there, you're probably best waiting till September when we come back, 
Some of them you might look at them and think, we haven't done the astronomy behind that, so we don't know what's going on. Probably very few of them, actually. Most of them are fairly sort of, you know, everyday kind of things. Um, but as I said, there are a few of them which it's a really good idea to try and get started on before the uh, summer holidays, all right? Um, even if they go wrong, you've got time over the summer holidays to try something out. Anything involving photography, which is going to be list B, obviously. List B could be a pair of binoculars. Uh, if you've got a telescope at home, fantastic. That You could use that if you wanted to. Um, or it could be a camera. All right. Uh, I know a lot of people, several people already asked me, I've got a little camera, can I take pictures of the sky? Uh, taking pictures of the stars, particularly constellation photography, I think is fantastic because there's so much colour in the night sky that your eye just doesn't see. And even a simple camera, without any complicated, clever stuff in Photoshop or anything like that, take a photograph, you can see the colours of the stars, I still think that's pretty amazing. Um, digital cameras, I have to say, have been a mixed blessing. We'll see later on, a lot of modern digital cameras have lots of features which make, which make it very difficult to photograph the night sky, all right? Um, and in fact, old-fashioned film cameras, if your granddad's got an old film camera in the loft, you might find that's actually uh, the best thing to use. Uh, a little bit there about how they're going to be assessed. Now, this is where this system is different to coursework, the old-fashioned GCSE coursework. Uh, you go off over the summer, you do your shadow stick experiment or you do your moon drawing, whatever you want to do, that's absolutely fine. The thing you mustn't do over the holidays is write any of it up. So you can do drawings, you can take photographs, you can write down numbers, you can measure shadows, you can draw graphs and tables, but you mustn't start the writing up. Anything that you write up, and it might not be writing, it might actually be typing, anything that you write up outside of uh, school, I can't mark it. All right. So the idea is, it, let's say you're doing lunar features, you go out in your own back garden, you get your binoculars or your telescope, whatever, and you draw your features of the moon, and you do as much of that as you like, you record the results, etc., etc., and then you need to bring those into school, and I'll set up some sessions where you can be plonked in front of a computer and do some writing up. Okay?